Uh, today I want to discuss productive assembly of the tube because the assembly of the internal system is probably the most time-consuming part of whole production and uh, the time means cost and because we want to offer reasonable price for our customers I want to keep the cost as low as possible. So the plan is to build jigs on a 3D printer for the individual assembly operations. Using the 3D printed jigs I hope we will be able to do the assembly operations fast and we will be productive enough. So the plan is to take the anode cup, this is the black part here, and uh, put all the numbers and uh, ceramic parts in it. So it will look something like, like this. Once the anode with the digit stack is assembled, uh, I'm planning to assemble uh, another part of the system with these circular parts with the rods. Uh, they will be all spot welded together in a jig and then uh, using another jig it will be spot welded to the back of the of the anode cup and uh, once this part is ready we need to we need to mount the stem into it to give the stem some support uh, it will be glued to two ceramic tubes these are here there will be one millimeter thick metal wires, stainless steel wires going through these rods and these wires will be spot welded to these metal parts. So today I want to start with this jig because I think this is the, this is the easiest part and I want to build and test the jig uh, which will hold these two tubes while applying the ceramic glue on we are currently using similar jig in production of our regular Nixie tube and I want to base this new jig on, on this one so I will keep that springy part what you see on the bottom uh, this holds, yeah, right now this holds the stem and it works really well and the rest, the upper part of the jig will be adjusted so that it can hold the rods during the during the ceiling. This is the final sub-assembly, what we want to achieve using this gluing jig. And this is how it was built using the existing jig, modifying it to, to our new purpose. And here is the final 3D printed jig. I will go more in details how we printed it in future videos about future jigs. For now, just briefly, it was printed using a Prusa mini printer with 0.25 millimeter nozzle. It's made of PETG filament and uh, the layer is 0.1 millimeter. So this resolution gives us enough details and allows us to make it reliable for holding the rocks. So I have result of the first test. Uh, it was holding on the on the rods quite firmly, but uh, it was not that difficult to remove it by pulling on the wires. So uh, I will try to come up with better solution. I will keep the design, but I will maybe modify the curing temperatures. And uh, one more thing which might have impact on this is. Uh, material of this rod because this glue is designed for use with alumina and I'm using moonlight uh, material. Second attempt, this time we have rods made of alumina. Wow, it, it, it really holds well this time, much better than, than before. Great, great, this is really good. Okay, it's inter- Ah, no, yeah. But I have to pull really hard on the, on the glue and the glue is still not, and the glue is still not the hardest as it can be because uh, it was not cured at the 
maximum recommended temperature to get the best uh, tensile strength. Okay, I think this will work. We will start using the alumina tubes with this glue and uh, we will see. We need to do vibration tests because uh, one of the scenarios when, when this can break is during the shipment when you have the vibrations. So we will test it, but not now, we will do it later. So let's make a quick tour in our workshop. So this is the place, what you know from the previous videos already. Uh, this is the glass working lathe. We do all the glass work, like we seal the tubes, make the stems for our tubes and so. These are the two oxygen concentrators that we want to replace with a, like one big rack of con oxygen concentrators. And here is a tray with 50 tubes prepared for the upcoming days for the pumping. We pump roughly 8 to 12 tubes per day. Uh, this one stands out from the, from the tray. As you can see, it's a custom tube for kick stage. So it's a similar tube we made for the Keysight technologies. This is a tube made for kick stage, a company from Croatia. New induction heater, the one that I made myself according to plans by Ron Soiland, uh, stopped working, so we had to buy a new one. This was not available at the time when I was building my own induction heater. And this is the pumping system, nothing new here, but here it's a new tube tester that we are just building. At this new one we are using drawers. And uh, in each drawer, there will be large board for 13 XC tubes. So altogether, we will have 600 positions for XC tubes. From the front, we will test the regular production. It will help us to catch some uh, tubes because they will sit here for a longer time before shipping to customers. So let's say if we put here 100 tubes and one of them will be leaky, uh, we'll be able to remove this uh, before it gets to the customer. So uh, purpose of this is like prolonged testing of the Nixie tubes. And the back side we'll use for a lifespan testing. And uh, this will be like every week we will take two tubes, we'll put it onto the tester. And then later, uh, let's say after a year or two, we will be able to see whether uh, Nixie tubes from some particular batch are failing or like not behaving like the others and we'll be able to track down the difference in materials or batch of the chemicals or whatever what we use so it will help us to understand more what has impact on the lifespan of the Nixie tubes. Okay what's here so here is a testing of the Nixie tubes, like the visual testing, whether all is aligned as it should be and, and so. Uh, this is a leak tester. And we have, from last year when we struggled with the fog problem, I promise that I will make a video about the fog problem, but uh, anyway, since this time, uh, we started using a residual gas analyzer uh, for, for testing. It's not for everyday use, but uh, it's just when we, when we need to do some tests. Okay, so this is the laminar flow hood. We don't use the laminar flow uh, feature here. We use just the front cover to prevent dust from settling on the parts inside. So this is where the Nixie tubes are assembled. Some other stuff. And here, this is our new washer system. Uh, we use it for washing the parts for ultrasonic baths, you can see them here. And um, the first one is for the cleaning agent and the other ones are for deionized water uh, for cleaning the parts after washing. 
Here are the controls. This works really well. And this is our workshop. So here we have the card we are building for the new oxygen concentrator system. There will be six uh, sets of cylinders with the molecular sieve and here will be the motors on the bottom. This is an unfinished project. I needed a large evacuated space uh, for a, like a study of one problem, but the problem was solved before I finished it. So it's just sitting here waiting for, for its use. This is the getter cutter. There were made just some small modifications since the videos I, I made. Uh, here we have the Nixie tube counter. It must be here, Nixie tubes. And this is a vacuum furnace, what we are building. So we have a glass chamber here. It can be loaded from this side. So you take a tray with the parts you need to treat and you put it inside. And once it gets inside, you evacuate the chamber to vacuum, slide the oven over it and start the heating. And once the procedure is finished, you just turn off the heating, you slide the oven to the side so that the tube can cool down quickly because otherwise it would take like one hour to cool down. And uh, then you can unload, the, unload it from, from this side again. Here we have a turbo pump a vacuum gauge and here we can let the air in. There is a filter for the dust so that we don't suck in also the dust and other stuff. All these parts are made on a 3D printer, so it, it was really easy to print it. And I can't imagine building this thing without a 3D printer. It's really, it's really uh, necessary for things like this. It's running, it's here. This is the Prusa MK3. It's running non-stop practically. And here is the Prusa Mini. It's also running practically every day, half a day. So this one is printing new jig for the, for the gluing. This is what I showed you. Yeah. And this thing is a press break. I started building this like uh, two years ago. And it will be small press brake, which will uh, speed up bending of these parts and maybe building some other parts. It's, we, could, we could easily ask uh, the manufacturer who makes the etching for us to bend it because you know, they have all the, all the tools for it. But I want to be more flexible and do more things in-house. So this, is, this was the reason to build it. And uh, yeah, let me show it. So this is the flat back plate for our tube. And it's done, it's bent. 90 degrees. Yesterday we were working on some metal parts and I ended up with burned motor on the, on the lathe and the drilling head stuck inside a spindle so I, I will need to freeze this to, to undo it. And so this is the place where we pack the clocks. So here we have boards and this is the tester we developed for our blob clocks. So you can take a blob clock and just put it here on the connector. The connectors are here, the USB connectors. This is a storage room. So here are some new new things to study. So this is a mechanical hand press. Uh, 
and here are some stamping tools I want to disassemble and study how it works and how is it made so maybe we can use it in the future for our for our parts and this is uh, where we store the parts and the material that we need for example here glues for gluing the sockets and here the back plates so every time ladies take the back plates into manufacture they take one of these one of these papers they put it here and once a week Renata takes all these papers and uh, adjusts the the numbers that we have in the in the system so that she knows when to order parts and like you know to prevent running out of the parts bases for the colon tubes and here are the finished Nixie tubes here and here are spare parts for the vacuum systems like the valves and other other things turbo controllers so many things Let's check the last room where Radim is working on the project. I'm going to throw up. Yesterday I sent first invoice to the customer for this project, for the project of the wall with 121 Nixie tubes and uh, so now it's more real, this project. Uh, I take it serious of course from the first day and uh, I know that we have to realize it since I promised it to the customer. Uh, but now when you send the invoice finally it's it's getting more serious. Anyway, uh, we have still like one and a half or two months for the development and then we have to start the production. The production will have to be really fast so everything will have to be ready. Uh, next week I want to make the first prototype of the tube, like it will be a full sealed glass envelope filled. I want to see how it glows and how much current it takes and, uh, and, and so. So we are now ordering parts for 200 tubes. The front windows are ordered. They will arrive in two weeks. The envelopes are produced by the local company. And uh, before ordering the full batch of 200 pieces, I need to know the final dimensions. I will know this once I make the prototype next week. But they have all the material in stock and they are just waiting for, for the order. Uh, the ceramic parts arrived. We are still waiting for the alumina rods or alumina tubes for the stem support uh, these are already produced and on the way to us they will arrive in roughly one week there is a progress on the anode cup as well uh, we got the parts made by laser uh, it's not very well cut because it was done on co2 laser and a fiber laser would be better for this but we will fix this in the next batch so we got some samples of of the of the sheets and uh, we will now put it on the press we have a local company that will do this for us they will try to do the forming they already have the the tools for it so uh, they will do the bending and forming of the anode cup and i hope it will work we will soon have also shape of the digits designed and once we have the design we can send it for etching to the factory and uh, they are quite fast so i hope we will receive them in like three weeks from now uh, that should be enough and the rest of the internal system can be made of wires in-house so we will bend it ourselves uh, without waiting for external companies or suppliers 
Okay, so far it seems that we are making it on time. Uh, we have to make it at the beginning of October. At the beginning of October, it have to be installed in the in at the place. And uh, so far, it seems that there are no delays on our side or side of our suppliers. So thanks for watching, and I will I will come up with some more updates in the following days.